So this electric scooter started off from humble beginnings as a college project that went through more iterations than you and I can imagine. It's been nearly a decade and they're still improving tweaks here and there, but now not just in a closed off lab, they have thousands of kilometers of data from users like you and I. And this is a celebration of that engineering. It's the Aether 450X. So the Aether comes in two variants, a low range and a high range. A low range, LR and high range HR. LR has a 2.9 kilowatt hour battery versus a high range has a 3.7 kilowatt hour battery. And Aether promises that the LR will give about 90 kilometers of true range, whereas the HR will give about 110. What's cool about this though, is the fact that both of them have the same motor. So it's gonna produce a continuous three kilowatts of power regardless. However, the thing about this is, and its range is the fact that depending on how much you're gonna twist the throttle, your range will, estimation will either go up or come down. You put this into warp mode though, it's gonna activate the entire engine. So that three kilowatt motor will produce a peak power of 6.4 kilowatts. It'll give you 26 Newton meters of torque. And so that means in a scooter, that's crazy. So zero to 40 will happen in about three seconds time. And the scooter is going to reach a top speed of 90 kilometers per hour in a scooter. It's built by a reinforced aluminum and steel frame. As for the colors, they're all catchy colors. Cosmic black, salt green, space gray, still white, lunar gray. And the one that I have here, it's called true red. Let me know down in the comment section below which one you liked. And naturally, because there's a LR and a HR version, the LR gets a 350 watt charger, which means the charging time is going to be about an eight hour overnight charge. The HR version gets about, you have the option of upgrading your charger to a 700 watt charger, which will bump down the charging time to about 6.5 hours. But here's the best thing. If you're really in a pinch and you need to travel here and there, Aether also provide an Aether grid. There are currently nine DC fast charging stations inside Kathmandu, two in Pokhara. Most of them here in Kathmandu are at Padpatini's and at Aether centers. And if you're not too hopeful about this, look abroad in India. In the past decade, they've expanded to hundreds of stations all across the country. So quite optimistic that it's gonna be the same in Nepal too. Plugging this into a DC fast charger means a zero to 80% charge in an hour. And so you just top it up and you're off. So did I mention the scooter? It actually has like a very usable 22 liters boot space. And the cool thing about this is there's actually an LED light strip here. So you don't have to fumble around in the dark. And then, as for clearance on this scooter, at the top, at the front, where it's at the lowest, it's 153 mm of ground clearance. But slowly coming to the back, because it's a tall riding scooter, there's actually 170 mm of ground clearance back here. So the cool thing is that whether you are riding alone or you have Lillian at the back, and whether you're riding on like bumpy roads or going to underground parkings, it's more than enough. And by the way, did I also tell you, this screen, it's got a 7-inch touchscreen with Google Maps inbuilt. Anyway, enough talk. Let me quickly hop on the scooter now and, and buckle yourselves because we're about to take off. Riding the scooter is not like any sort of petrol scooter at all. It's so smooth. It's effortless and someone at Aether, a team of people, have just done their research. Like, I am actually on a pretty steep hill and I stop. It engages auto hold by itself. Like, who thought of this? It's such a feature that I will now forever be looking forward to in all two wheelers. You also have other smart features like a reverse mode like which two-wheeler has a reverse mode and you can actually put a pillion behind and switch it into reverse and as long as it's not too much of an incline it'll pull it up no questions asked 
Another safety feature this bike also has is a cutoff, a motor cutoff. Like there's actually a kill switch here. But in the event your stand is down, it'll also cut off the motor. Another feature that I will now always miss is that this dash here. It's a 7 inch TFT touchscreen with Google Maps inbuilt. And it's got all the Aether grids preloaded into it. Like, if I'm in a pinch, it'll just search up the nearest Aether grid and you're off. You don't have to worry about that. Again, if you've been noticing, I've been climbing up non stop. 26 Newton meters of torque is more than ample. I'm, in fact, just in ride mode. The scooter provides a eco mode, a smart eco mode that will actually limit the influence of torque even more so that you get close to your aether claimed true range of either 90 or 110 kilometers depending on your variant a sports mode and then all hell breaks loose in warp mode where you get the maximum power and torque i mentioned before and for me as a single passenger right now i'm just riding up this hill in ride mode Usually when I have a pillion behind, ride mode is my go-to mode. I feel that eco mode might be a bit lacking, but it works nevertheless. Like even right now, it's still accelerating even on an uphill, no questions asked. And the thing about the power delivery is that it's super sensitive and linear depending on how much you're demanding out of it. No hesitation, nothing, it will just continue to pull. And on top of that, as much as I love that the scooter goes fast, the scooter also stops just as quickly. And by just as quickly, I mean 60 to a dead stop in 28 meters is what Aether claims. And that is all thanks to these sticky MRF tires, but also these awesome hydraulic brakes. It's got a 200 mm disc at the front and a 190 at the back, a 3 caliper hydraulic system at the front and a 1 caliper at the back, and it does the job. You do want to note that the rear wheel is a bit prone to locking up, so maybe someday Aether will have a revised bike where you have ABS in it. I'm actually catching up to a regular petrol bike just to see. I'll probably try to overtake it too on an uphill. Yeah, no no questions asked. What more do you want? And as for regenerative braking, because this is an EV and there's no not having regen, you can't really switch it around. Like, it gets activated at... 80% when you're down to 80% battery health, battery state of battery. You can't change the hardness of it, but it's there. The moment you let go of the accelerator, it will immediately start regenerator braking. And it's not too intrusive. It'll slow down your bike, but it's not any artificial feeling sort of regen braking at all. Furthermore, this engine sound, it's the Aether signature sound, this wee sort of whining electric motor sound. And while there are people that love it, there are also people that hate it. It's a very personal sort of decision. And I for one love it just because in Nepal, in South Asia where you ride this, where it was made, there's a lot of people around you and you just have to be careful about who's there and you need to alert them. You can't just ride thinking everyone's gonna just expect to have you and especially when you are at speed. For me, the sweet spot of riding this bike is actually somewhere between 20 to 80% of battery. And why I say that is, of course, 80% is the cutoff where regenerative braking finally starts. But then you also have below 20% a 
energy conservation sort of mode it really wants you to get to the next charger whether it's at home or an ether grid asap you really notice the lack of power and this like sort of turtle mode it goes into when you are riding with a pillion behind and finally the suspension on this thing let me just say it's a performance oriented scooter that can go fast and also brake fast so you definitely need it on the stiffer side which means unfortunately it will be passing bumps and reverberations and jittery bits onto you but the thing is at the front it's got a telescopic fork suspension and at the rear it's got a monoshock and they both do an awesome job of soaking in the normal potholes and unpaved rough roads in town you don't feel too bad as long as you're not trying to like speed through them even with a pillion i've been testing it out rigorously non-stop and there is a decent amount of travel the suspension fork and the springs both at the front and the back I mean, it's a scooter, you can't expect a bike-sized telescopic front suspension, can you? But it does do the job pretty well, and also you don't want your performance-oriented scooter to have saggy shock absorbers, do you? <laughs> For me, it's good enough. You just have to be a bit mindful of how you enter these potholes and exit these bumps. So, the satisfaction in owning anything, your dream car, your dream bike, your dream house, is that eventually it'll need some maintenance and in that respect your dream bike your dream vehicle your dream car it's only as good as the after sale service that the brand can provide and i think that's exactly what aether have been trying to establish here in nepal they've been working really hard in trying to build a sense of community among their early buyers in that respect they're really quick to actually set up a workshop. This workshop I checked out, I've been going to like showrooms and talking with their staff, mechanics at the workshop, and they're all super friendly and welcoming. They've done a great job in like stocking very quick changing parts, like your brake pads that wear off quickly, or like these body panels might get damaged, you might need to swap them out. But they've also done a good job in like swapping a decent number of integral parts like your battery, your hubs, or like your motor. They also really try to get the buyers of this bike to like come together in like some form of community ride that happens like every quarter of the year. And as for warranty on this bike, if you're talking about whether you can trust this electric scooter brand or not, warranty, there's just about a different warranty in everything. You have a vehicle warranty, you have a charger warranty. Like, who on earth gives a charger warranty? I've never heard of that in any EV, whether a bike or a car. And then you also have a battery warranty. The battery warranty is five years or 60,000 kilometers. But here's what Aether have also promised above and beyond. They promise that in the five years after purchase and usage, your battery health will be 70% and above. Meaning since you buy the scooter and in five years of usage, it will retain at least 70% of its initial range and juice. Otherwise you can claim your warranty. And after reviewing and researching and testing out this bike so much this last couple of days, just stopping by all the experience centers and the workshops, I've come to realize that when I picked up this bike for review, it wasn't just reviewing the technicalities and laying out the features. A part of this entire exp Aether experience, as they call it, is also the fact that you now come full circle and you're not only picking up a motor that will take you from place A to B. It's also someone's vision from a decade ago. It's also someone's hard labor of love with all the iterations. And by that, what I mean is that Aether are actually listening on the other side. When I was test riding the scooter, because I've driven so many EVs, all of them have differing modes of regenerative braking, whether they're like inbuilt into the nav or there's some but physical button. You can turn off regenerative braking, you can alter the extremity of regen braking, but here there really isn't anything. But either have been listening to their customers 
as well as doing their own research and their upcoming models, there's actually a new feature called Magic Twist whereby your accelerator, instead of pulling it down for like accelerating, you can actually push it forward to actually decelerate your bike. So I think that was very cool. And overall, this bike, it's quick, it's zippy, it'll handle city traffic. It's got awesome features like auto turn off of like indicators, auto hold on inclinations, declinations with a range of like 90 or 110 kilometers of true range as claimed by Aether. That's more than decent for intercity commuting. And with the Aether grid, you can just top off and be on for the next destination. It's got a decent boot space. It's got cool looking features. At the end of the day, I definitely enjoyed this bike more than I thought I would have. It's made that very mundane task of like commuting in city traffic from point A to point B from bumper to bumper. A little bit more exciting, a little bit faster, a little bit more thrilling and I for one really enjoyed it. So let me know what you think about this EV two-wheeler. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next one.